The following is the class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, sixth chapter, text one through four, given by His Divine Grace A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on September fifth, nineteen sixty-six, in New York. Sri Bhagavan Bhat, Bhagavan the other day, we have explained who is Bhagavan. Bhagavan is the last word of the absolute truth. <coughs> the absolute truth is realized in three phases. Impersonal Brahma, localized Paramatma Supat Soul, and ultimately as the Supreme Personality of God. Ultimately, Bhagavan, or the Supreme Absolute Truth, is first. And secondarily, He is all-pervading super soul. And the Brahma Jyoti is false. <coughs> so here it is said, the Bhagavan was. Bhagavan means the uh, proprietor of everything and uh, all-powerful, all, and uh, he has got all the, all famous. Nobody can be more famous than God. And all beautiful and full of knowledge and full of renunciation. Uh, full of opulence, at the same time, full of renunciation. Here, in the material world, you will find if a rich man has got great opulence, he is not liking to give it up. He is not like. He does not like to renounce. But in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you will find uh, <coughs> full of all opulence but at the same time full of renunciation. <coughs> the six qualifications. Uh, proprietor of all affluence, all famous, all strength, all beauty, all knowledge, and all renunciation. Uh, in, anywhere you find all these six qualifications in food. He is the Supreme Personality of God. <coughs> so here it is said, the Bhagavan was. The Supreme Personality of God is, is speaking. Uh, he is speaking means He is speaking with all knowledge. His knowledge has no flaw. Our knowledge has many, so many flaws. We commit mistakes. We are illusioned. Sometimes we speak something, and at our heart there is something else. That means we cheat. And our experience all imperfect, because our senses are imperfect. Therefore, I cannot speak anything to you. Oh, if you ask me, Samiji, then what you are speaking? I am speaking. Simply what the Supreme Personality Godhead has said. I'm just repeating the same word. That's all. <coughs> Don't think that I am speaking. I'm simply an instrument. Uh, real speaker is the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is without and within. So what does he say? He says, Anasitam, anasita karma phalam, tarjam karma karoti ja, sa sannyasi, sa yogi ja, na niragni, na kaakriya. <coughs> anasita, anasita means without any shelter. Karma phalam, everyone is working, expecting some result. Whatever you do, what? You expect some result. 
here, Bhagavan says, the Supreme Personality God has said, that anyone who works without any shelter of the reason, he works, then if he does not expect any result, then why does he work? Unless, suppose I ask somebody to work this way, uh, then he will expect something, some result, some remuneration, some reward, or some uh, salary. That is the way of working here. But uh, Krishna prescribes the anasthita karma phala. One who works without any expectation of result or reward, then why does he work? Karjam, it is my duty. It is my duty. Not with a razor, but uh, as duty. I am duty bound to do this. Karjam karma karotika, in such a way, if somebody works, such a he is actually in the renounced order of life. There are four stages of life according to Vedic culture. We have many times explained to you that uh, brahmachari, griyatta, manaprastha, and sannyasi. Brahmachari means student life to be trained up in spiritual uh, understanding, Krishna consciousness, fully trained up, he is called brahmachari. Then, with, after full training, he accepts wife, he gets himself married, and lives with family and children, that is called grihastha. Then, after fifty years, he leaves the children alone and gets out of home, accompanied by his wife, and travels in a holy places, that is called vanapra, retired life. And at last, he gives her his wife to the care of his children, grown up children, and he remains alone. And that is called sannyas, a renounced order of life. So these four orders of life there are. Now Krishna says that simply renouncement is not all. Simply renouncement is not all. There must be some duty. Karjam. Karjam means it is my duty. Now what is that duty? He has renounced the family life. He has no more botheration how to maintain his wife and children. Then what is his duty? Ah, that duty is very responsible duty ah, to work for Krishna. <coughs> Karjam. Arjuna means it is the real duty. There are two kinds of duties in our life. One duty is to serve the illusion, and the other, another duty is to serve the reality. When you serve the reality, that is called real sannyas. And when we serve the uh, illusion, that is called māyā. Yeah. <coughs> now, either to serve the reality or to serve the illusion, I am in such a position that I have to serve. My position is not to become the master, but to become the servant. That is my constitution. Everyone in this material world is a servant. Nobody is master. One thinks that I am the master, but he is actually servant. Suppose if you have got your family, if you are thinking that you are the master of your wife, of your children, of your servant, of your business, uh, that is false. You are the servant of your wife, you are the servant of your children, you are the servant of your servants. That is your real position. Uh, any case you take, the president, he is considered to be the master of your country, 
but actually he is the servant of your country. So if you go on arising, that our position is always servant. So either we shall become the servant of illusion or we shall have to become the servant of God. But if we remain the servant of illusion, then our life is wasted. Oh. Everyone is servant of illusion. He is servant of nobody, but servant of illusion. He is expecting some profit. For serving, he is expecting some profit. But that profit is transient and illusion. Therefore, he is servant of illusion. And when a person becomes to his real senses, transcendental senses or jnana, when he becomes actually the person in knowledge, then he becomes the servant of the reality. Because I am servant always, this way or that way. So knowledge means, then why shall I serve the unreal illusion? Let me serve the reality. If my business is to serve and nothing to be, never to be master, always to serve, then why I shall serve the illusion? Let me serve the real. That sense is called knowledge. So anasthita karma phalam, sannyas, renounce order of life means one who is in perfect knowledge, he can take sannyas. Otherwise, uh, if he takes all of a sudden the renounced order of life, uh, he will create misery for himself and misery for others. In full knowledge, that's Sanna. So here, how that full knowledge is exhibited after Sanna, that is explained here by the Supreme Personality of God. What is that? Tarjam. It is my duty to become Krishna conscious and to serve the cause of Krishna. Oh, that is my duty. That is my real duty. When you come, when you come to this knowledge, then we become Mahatma or the great soul. Vasudeva Sarvamiti ka Mahatma Sudulla. We will find in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhavanam Janmanam Ante. Jnanavan Mang Prabhadra. After many, many births, when a person, when a soul is perfectly elevated to the platform of real knowledge, transcendental knowledge, then what does he do? He surrenders unto me, Krishna says, he surrenders unto me. Why? Now, Vasudeva Sagamiti. You are everything. Vasudeva means Krishna. This is Krishna consciousness. But Krishna says, such so Mahatma Sudhullava, such great soul is very scarce, rarely found. But any intelligent person, if he understands this philosophy, that my ultimate goal of life is to surrender unto Krishna, why not surrender immediately? Why shall I wait? Bhavanam Janmanavante, why shall I wait for so many births? So that stage is called real sanya. Karjam. Karjam means it is my duty. I am not forced, but voluntarily, out of love, transcendental love. Huh. Just like mother serves this a child out of love. Ah, there is no question of salary or remuneration. The mother loves his child similarly. He can love the Supreme Lord in many ways. He can love the Supreme Lord as master. He can love the Supreme Lord as friend. He can love the Supreme Lord as child. He can love the Supreme Lord as your husband. Anyway, there, there are five different rasas or too much in which 
we are eternally related with the Supreme Law. And when we are actually in the liberated stage of our knowledge, we can understand that our relationship with the Lord is in this way. That is called sarok siddhi That is real self-realization. That is real self-realization. Everyone has an eternal relationship with the law. Either in the conception of uh, master and servant, or in the conception of friend and friend, or in the conception of uh, parents and the child, or in the conception of husband and wife, or in the conception of paramar and lover and, and the beloved. So these relationships are they are eternal. Now the whole process of spiritual realization is to come to this stage, transcendental stage. This relationship with the Supreme Lord is pervertedly reflected in this material world. And therefore we have got this relationship yet master and servant. But because it is perverted, therefore that relationship is not master and servant. That relationship is with the uh, money and uh, benefits. There is no love. There is no love. Here in this material world, the master and the servant, uh, that relationship continues so long the master is able to pay the servant. As soon as the payment is stopped, the relationship of master and servant also stops. Therefore that is not eternal. Ah, come on, sit down. That is not eternal. Similarly, ah, here also there is relationship between friend and friend. But in slight difference of opinion, the friendship breaks. Ah, the friend becomes enemy. Therefore it is perverted reflection. Similarly, the relationship between ah, come on here. Uh, relationship between mother and son, a slight difference of opinion breaks the relationship, and the son becomes out of the Ah, relationship of mother, mother becomes out of it. Everywhere, husband and wife, ah, a slight difference of opinion, there is divorce, separation. So no relationship here in this material world is actual. All is remember that all relationship in this material world is part reflection of that relationship which we have got eternally with the Supreme Personality of God. Yeah. It is simply reflected, just like the sun sign, and the sun sign is reflected in the glass, and that reflection comes to your... Oh, oh, I, in my apartment, at six o'clock, the sun sign comes from the uh, western side, uh, eastern side. Then in the evening, the sunshine cannot come from the eastern side. The sunshine comes from the western side. But it is coming because it is reflected through a glass in the opposite house. This is the idea of reflection. That reflection of the sunshine is not real. But it appears just like sunshine. Similarly, all our relationships here are either as master and servant, or as friend and friend, or as parents and child, or as husband and wife, or as lover and the beloved. Any relationship, whatever we see here, that is the perverted reflection of our eternal relationship with God. So, when we come to that and, and, and the platform of understanding, then we are perfectly knowledge. So when that knowledge comes, here it is stated, he said, the service of the Lord, Krishna consciousness, karjam 
Sahajam means it is my duty. Because I have got my eternal love relationship with Krishna. There is no question of remuneration. Of course, remuneration is there, thousand times more than uh, what remuneration we get here by rendering our service. Krishna, <coughs> thousand times, uh, not thousand times, because there is no limit. Uh, there is a <coughs> nice story of a great devotee, uh, Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was a very powerful king, and he conquered over the heavenly planet. So the denizens of the heavenly planet, they appeal to the Supreme Lord to save them. <clears throat> that we are now conquered by the demonic king, Bali Maharaj. <clears throat> so, Bali Maharaj and Krishna, Krishna took the shape of a dwarf and went to Bali Maharaj for begging as a Brahmin boy. And uh, he approached him, Bali Maharaj, I want something from you. You are a great king. You are give, you give in charity to the Brahmin. So I want something from you. The Bali Maharaj said, Yes, I shall give you what you want. Now I want a, a land uh, of three, I mean, in the measurement of my soul, three soul measurement. That's all. So he was a boy, his, his soul was so not very long. The Bali Maharaj said, what, what he'll do is a small piece of land. And, but uh, he said, yes, that will surprise me. If you promise this tree, measurement of my three palms, land, that will surprise me. Then <coughs> Bali Maharaj agreed. And uh, by his true measurement of the palm, he covered the whole universe. Then he's asking, Bali Maharaj, now whatever you have got, you got, now it is finished by two feet, by two measurements of my palm. Now what, where I am going to keep my third, third one? Then Bali Maharaj understood that it is a favor of the Supreme Lord. He said, my dear Lord, yes, I have now lost everything, I have no other property, but I have got my head. Please kindly keep it. So, the Lord was very much pleased on him, and he offered, Bali Maharaj, then what do you want from me? Uh, no, I never expected anything from you. I could understand. He wanted from me uh, everything. So I have offered me everything that is finished. I'll do it. Then Lord says, yes, but from my side, I have done something to offer you, and I shall remain as your order carrier servant in your door. Uh, so he remains always, just like we are sitting here, there may be some doorman, he is a lord became his doorman. So that is the return. Uh, if we offer something to lord, uh, that he is rewarded in many millions of times. So we should not expect. The Lord is always uh, serious to return the service of the servant, of his devotee. Uh, so there are many devotees. This devotee, Bali Maharaj, is uh, surrender everything for the service of the Lord. Uh, so he became a famous uh, king. Sarva Atma Sapane Abhavad Bali Vayyasi. So now, anyone who thinks that service of Krishna, a service of the Lord, is my duty. Duty. He is the, he is the man in perfect knowledge. Sasanyati. Sasanyati ka yogi cha. And is actually yogi. Uh, we have heard the names of uh, so many yogis. But here, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he is actual yogi. Uh, who who has surrendered himself fully unto me, and he is engaged in my service as a matter of duty. That's all. Sāśantrāsī sa yogīca na niragni na kākriya na niragni. Niragni means uh, those who have left home uh, 
in the in the um, Banasam Dharma, uh, one who is a householder, he has to perform daily yoga. So there is fire, fire. He is still will find uh, and, uh, the party, the fire worshiper. So this fire worship is recommended in Vedic literature. So grihastas or the householders, they are expected to offer, uh, uh, I mean, say, sacrifice in the fire daily. <clears throat> Jal sannyasamiti prahu yogaṁ tar viddhi pāndava na jasaṁnasya saṅkalpa yogi bhavati karsa. That is a very important point. Jal sannyasamiti prahu. Uh, Lord Sri Krishna in a steps of yoga that whatever is known as sannyas, renounce order of life, that is also yoga. Yoga system and sannyas is there is no difference. Ah. Because everything on the yoga system, this Bhagavad Gita is also known as yoga system. You will find here three kinds of yoga karma yoga, jnana yoga, and bhakti yoga. So, just like uh, you have got a staircase. Uh, to rise up to the fifth or sixth or tenth floor or, uh, or more than that, the whole staircase of the lift service is called yoga. Now, somebody may be in the uh, fifth floor, somebody may be in the tenth floor, somebody may be on the fiftieth floor, uh, but the same lift service is going. So you take the lift service as the yoga uh, connection within the highest uh, uh, story to the down. Uh, anyone who has uh, elevated himself to a certain platform, some, someone is called karma yogi, someone is called jnana yogi, someone is called dhyana yogi, someone is called bhakti yogi. So there are different kinds of yoga in this conception. Otherwise, the, the leap service, yoga service is the same. It is the difference is between the elevation point. So similarly, jang sannyasam meti prahu yogam tang riddhi pandava. O ajyom, pandava means the son of pandu, ajyom. You can understand that what is sannyas and what is yoga, they are the same principle. They are the same principle how na, na dhasaṁ nasya saṅkalpa yogi bhavati kasyaṁ. Because without being freed from desire or sense gratification, uh, nobody can become either a yogi or a sannyas. Everyone is trying to have some profit out of his activity. There are many uh, yogi, uh, they perform yoga system or teach yoga system for some profit. But that is not the idea of yoga system. Everything should be engaged in the service of the law. Everything. Whatever we do, either as ordinary worker or as sannyasi or as yogi or as jnani, all our energy should be dotted with Krishna consciousness. That is real sannyas, that is real yoga. Anurukham nid yogam karma karanam uchyate. Those who are just stepping on the uh, <coughs> staircase of the yoga system, for them karma karanam uchyate, they must work. In the beginning, nobody should stop working. Nobody should stop working. That's why right. you will find in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna uh, uh, requesting Arjun to become a yogi, but he never asked him to cease from the fight. How one can become a yogi at the same time remain a fighter? That's a practical example, you see. Uh, Krishna is asking Arjun uh, tasmāt yogi bhava arjuna. My dear Arjuna, therefore you become a yogi. 
But he at the same time he is asking to fight. And now we know the yogi uh, sits down at a place and meditates and concentrates his mind and controls his senses. How is that? He is fighting at the same time yogi. Uh, this is the mystery of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, he can remain a fighting man at the same time the highest yogi, highest sannyas. How? In Krishna concept. You have to fight for Krishna, that's all. That is the secret. That is the secret. If you fight for Krishna, if you fight for work, uh, fight for work for Krishna, uh, if you eat for Krishna, if you sleep for Krishna, if you do everything for Krishna, then you are the yogi, you are the sannyasi, and you are healthy. That is the secret of Brahma. The practical example, you see, that Arjuna is asked, Tasmad Yogi Bhava Arjuna. My dear, uh, now you will find in this chapter, Krishna will uh, instruct Arjuna how to become a Dhyana Yogi. That is, meditation, Yogi, in meditation. He will ask Arjuna in this chapter. And he will find, Arjuna will say, My dear Krishna, it is impossible for me. It is impossible for me. The system which is a domain for meditation is not possible for me. And actually also, although the instruction of yoga system is offered to Krishna in very full detail, you will never find in the history of Arjuna's life that ever he became a meditator. Ever. Uh, then how we became the most perfect yogi? Uh, that is that that we find in the, at the end of this chapter that <coughs> one who is always thinking of Krishna. Yogi Namaki Sarvesa Madhata Santanatmana Sadhyavan Vidati Juma Sami Vitsatamataha. Krishna when when he saw that Arjuna he is declined. Then he say, My dear Krishna, my dear Arjuna, you are the highest yogi. You are the topmost yogi. Why? Because you are always thinking of me. That you have no other business than to think of me. This is the yoga system, this is the sanna system, this is the jnana system, all perfection of jnana, yoga, jnana, whatever. Sacrifice, charity, and penance, all the recommended uh, activities for spiritual realization ends in Krishna consciousness. So if you directly become Krishna conscious, then you are yogi, sannyasi, and everything. As it is stated here, sa sannyasi sa yogi cha. He is sannyasi, he is yogi, and he is everything. Oh. So this simple method to become Krishna conscious is the highest perfection of life. Therefore, this society established for Krishna consciousness. The techniques are there in the Bhagavad Gita and there are Srimad Bhagavatam. Just try to accept the principle of life and your this human form of life will be successful and perfect uh, by Krishna consciousness. So Arudukha Munit Jugam Karma Karana Muchyate, those who are in the preliminary state, they should always work for Krishna. Uh, always, they must find out always some duty. Uh, what is there to work now for Krishna consciousness? Karma Karana Muchyate. They should not and remain idle for a second, always find out some things. That is meditation. How I shall work for Krishna? Arurukha munet yugam karma karana mutyate, yuga rurasya tasriva samak karana mutyate. And when one is advanced in perfect stage of that Krishna consciousness, then he may not physically work, but because within himself, he is always working for Krishna. Samakkaranam. So in the beginning, 
Uh, just like in uh, and, uh, small boys and children, then all is twenty-four hours engaged in these schooling. Otherwise, uh, they will spoil. So similarly, those who uh, are in the preliminary stage of Krishna consciousness, they should always engage uh, themselves uh, in the work. There are varieties of work. There are varieties of work. Now, those who are actually working with our society, uh, they practically do not find any time anywhere. There are so many works. Uh, they cannot finish. Uh, they are night have got work for Krishna Pasha. Uh, and we are happy to execute such work. And the students who are working with us, cooperating, they are also happy. You will find happiness. Uh, if you chant Hare Krishna twenty-four hours, you will never get tired. And that is it. You will never get tired. And any other material thing, if you chant or you repeat three times, you will get tired. Oh. It is a practical thing. But if you go on chanting Hare Krishna twenty-four hours, you will never get tired. So if you engage yourself in the activity of Krishna consciousness, you will never get tired. Because you are acting on the spiritual platform. Uh, spiritual platform is absolute. The material planet platform is different. Uh, if you work very hard, then you get tired. So this is, these are the understanding of spiritual consciousness or Krishna consciousness. Now here it is uh, very clearly explained. Jadahi nendriyatyesu na karmasu anasadyate sarva sankalva sannyasi when one becomes first class uh, yogi or when one is considered, considered to be elevated in the highest uh, yogic uh, platform or sannyas platform, then jada at that time when no Indriyat Kesu, a person who works not for sense gratification, that's all. Everyone works for sense gratification. In the material world, uh, everyone is working for sense gratification. Uh, they, everyone works here to get some reward, some remuneration for wages, and that is utilized for sense gratification. Now here it is said, yoga rula. When one is perfect yogi, uh, that is explained here, that jadahi na indra jesu, when one does not work for sense gratification, na karma suvam sajyate, he does not engage himself in the work simply for sense gratification. Oh. And sarva thamkalva sanyasi, and he has no desire to get any fruit, because his desire in Krishna is already there, so he has no other desire. 